Hey guys, James from Crown Vendor here. Hope you're having an awesome week and welcome to this video where we're going to show you how you can use Dropbox to help you render in Blender. But before I get started with that, I just want to say a really big thank you to all of you who've subscribed recently. It's making a big difference in helping us do what we do, um, which is we're making a network renderer add-on for Blender. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. And if after watching this video you feel that we're adding something of value to the Blender community, then please go ahead and subscribe, like, and also consider sharing it with someone who you think might find this useful as well. Okay, so some background story on why we did this. So I have a friend down in Melbourne who was keen to get a production into a competition and I think the deadline was pretty much, you know, the Monday of the weekend and we were at the Friday of that weekend. So pretty tight deadline and he had two Surface Pros and they were giving him about half an hour frame for a thousand frame animation. So I think, you know, you don't really need to do the maths. It just wasn't going to work. And so we thought about how we could do it and we realized that we had... You know, I had five computers at my place. Uh, my friend Jeremy had one at his place. And then we recently met up with a couple of really generous people, um, one in Belgium, one in Switzerland, and they were willing to date some computing power as well. And then we realized, wow, well, together we've got enough machines, but how do we link them all together? I'd seen a video by Moby Motion, and I'll link to that video in the description, showing you how to connect computers together over a local network using placeholders and Blender. Problem was he was using machines in the same building and ours were in Sydney, Melbourne, Belgium, and Switzerland. So that wasn't going to work. And so we had the idea of using Dropbox. I think I've done that maybe once before, but this was a, a whole different level because it was a quite a complex animation and there was cache files. And so we, we gave it a shot and we managed to pull it off. And so that's what this video is about. The first thing we're going to do is to create our Dropbox folder. Now I've just created a folder called Dropbox Test inside my Dropbox folder on my hard drive. The next thing I'm going to do is to create another folder inside it. Let's do that now. I'm going to call it Frames, and inside this folder, all the rendered frames from all the machines that will help me to render my scene will end up in here. Now we need to go back to Blender and save the file that we want to finish into the same folder as the frames folder. I'm just going to call it test blend for now. Now we can see that the blend file is next to the folder where all the frames will be. So now we've got the Dropbox folder pretty much set up. Now we need to go back to Blender and configure things so that all the computers that will render won't render frames on top of each other. That's where placeholders comes in. So we'll do that next. The next thing we need to do is configure Blender. Now if we didn't do anything and just rendered the animation now, and other computers tried to render into that same Dropbox, then we'd have chaos. Each machine would just write over the other files that were being written. So what we need to do is come down to the output area and select placeholders. And what this will do is it will create empty files for each frame that the computer is trying to render, which will stop the other frames from writing over it. This is explained pretty well by Moby Motion in his video, which I've got a link to in the description below. But for now, we just need to save placeholders and set the location where this machine will render to the frames folder so that it will write frames here. When all that's done and your settings are as you desire, you can hit save. Now one thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a really quick animation so that we know that this is working when we actually do a test render. I'm just going to make the cube rotate. I'm going to do this for about 100 frames. There is one small caveat, and that's that each person or each computer that you administer that's going to render needs to change its output folder to point to the frames folder on that particular computer. This is because the username will probably be different, and therefore this path to this folder will probably be different on each computer. But we're going to show you how to set that up on another machine in the next part. But for now, we've saved all the settings that we need into our blend file. We've made sure the animation is working. And we've saved it to the folder. And we can tell that because we've got two blend files in here now. So we know that we're pretty much ready to go. So now that we have our blend file set up and also our Dropbox folder ready, we need to share it with those people who are going to help us to render. So to do that, locate the folder. And then just simply share it like this. 
This might work a little differently on your operating system or you might even use the web app, but it's all the same thing. Share it, enter some email addresses. I'm just going to make some up. I'm only demonstrating how this works. Make sure that this is set to can edit. If it's set to something else, for example, can view, then all the friends who are helping you render won't be able to write any render frames into your Dropbox folder and you'll be the only one that ends up rendering anything. You can also add a message. Um, I usually make it a point to pre-arrange this so that they know the link is coming, but you can also add something like as we discussed, please help me render. And then hit share. That'll send an email to all the people who you've entered their email address for and they'll get the link to be able to access this Dropbox folder and write all their frames to it. Then you need to organize a time where everyone's actually going to open Blender, open this file and start rendering. We'll talk about that in the next section. So now we're ready to start rendering. I'm actually looking at another machine which I've set up to act like it was a machine controlled by somebody else. So this is another computer that I have in my house and I've set it up with remote desktop just so I can control it. What we're going to do now is we're going to set up this machine to render the scene. First of all I'm going to open Blender. Then I'm going to open the file which came inside that Dropbox folder. This machine is now synced to Dropbox and we can see the files here. We've now got the file open in Blender and we're ready to start checking all the things we need to check before we start rendering. The first thing is to make sure that this file path actually points to the location on this computer of the frames folder which we set up earlier in the video. Remember this folder is going to actually, sorry, remember that this path will actually be different when you first open the file on a different computer because it was saved on a previous computer with a different value. Now I've changed this path to point to the right place. So I can accept that. Also make sure overwrite is off, placeholders is on, and file extensions is on. You want to make sure this matches on each computer. If I go back to the first computer, you'll see that it matches identically. If there are any differences here, you'll get bad results. Now we're ready to start rendering. So I'll go back up to the top of the panel, click on render animation, and I'm using the standard render controls here, not crowd render. I'm going to start rendering on this machine and the next machine in just a second. But a word about that, to get the most benefit out of all the computers that you've got available to you, make sure you all start rendering at the same time, or more or less the same time. Now you might want to set this up via social media or by an email or some other method. Essentially you want to make sure that everyone who's helping you understands that they're going to start rendering at a particular time. Also make sure you include some instructions in the email you're sending to set up this path properly. If the users or the other friends that you've got are helping you render do not set this path properly, then you won't see any frames from them turning up in the folder on your Dropbox. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So we're going to start rendering now. So I'm going to hit animation, start rendering here. And we do the same thing on this computer. Now notice we had some frames already in that folder and we've started rendering on this machine at frame six. And you can see that frame 6 has been added to the Dropbox. This is a good way to make sure that things are working. You should see that frames are updating in here. You also know which user is doing it. You'll see that because I'm the only user it says you added. That's because all of the Dropbox accounts I have running for this demonstration belong to me. But if you had other friends who are helping you, you'd see their names appearing as each file was written into your Dropbox, which kind of helps you to know if any of the machines have stopped working and it's a good way to make sure that the render is going to be nice and fast. You can see here we skipped a frame, we went from frame 10 to frame 12. That's because the other machine is also writing frames and Blender is smart enough to know that with the placeholder setting on it will only write files to which there are currently no placeholder files in the Dropbox. We're going to speed this up and we'll play back the whole animation when we've finished. Now that the render is finished and we have all the frames, we have one cleanup job to do before we can actually import all the frames into Blender and put together the animation. If we have a look at the frames folder which we created earlier, you'll notice that there are a lot of strange looking files in there with these long names. What's happened here is that two machines have both written a placeholder file with the same file number at the same time, and this results in what's known as a conflicted copy. This means that Dropbox wasn't able to tell which placeholder file should be the one that it keeps. 
We're not going to be able to import the animation easily unless we get rid of these files. So all we have to do is enter in a search term which will actually highlight just the conflicted copies and not the files we want to keep. You can do this by putting the word conflict into the search bar. Now I'm doing this on a Macintosh, but pretty much the same thing should work in Windows. You also want to make sure the search is just in the frames folder so that you can easily select all of the conflicted copy files and delete them and nothing else. Now once we've deleted those files, we can remove the search term and go back and look and make sure that we've got all of the image frames that we actually want. It's a good idea just to check that there aren't any missing before you actually go ahead and make the animation. Now that looks like all the frames are there, so let's go ahead now and just put the animation together in Blender itself. We'll switch to the video editing view. We'll come down to Add, Image, and then we'll select Frames. Hit A to select all, and then Add Image Strip. Now we should be able to play back the image in Blender. We'll zoom in a bit so we can see what we're looking at. We'll also have to move the image frames we've just imported into the actual area where the animation is playing. Now we should be able to play the animation. And there we have it. We can see that the animation is playing properly. Okay, so in conclusion, I think using cloud storage is a really interesting way to do network rendering. Certainly in our case with the project we helped render, we couldn't have done it any other way. However, I would say that I think if you've got lots of powerful computers on your local network, as in the case of a render farm, you're probably better off using network attached storage devices or just sharing a folder from one main machine to all of the other render nodes. There's two reasons for this. The first is uh, Dropbox gives you three gigabytes of free storage space, and if you go above that, you need to pay for a premium account, whereas your own network hard drives, you, know, you don't need to pay to use those after you've bought them. The other reason is the way that Dropbox works is all of your data is first uploaded to the cloud and then it's downloaded again to each of the, each of the computers that you want to use, which means if you've got a one gigabyte file, you upload it, that's one gig of bandwidth, and if you download it to, do, to 10 other machines, that's another 11 gigs of bandwidth that you're going to consume. So if you pay for bandwidth at all, it's probably going to be quite an expensive exercise if you've got large blend files. Having said that though, in our case, um, we didn't have to pay for bandwidth because we were on unlimited plans and all of the computing power was actually distributed across the internet anyway. So it was a much, much better way for us to get computing power that we didn't have locally. Also, our project fit within three gigabytes, so we didn't actually have to pay anything, which for us was awesome. We were able to easily shave off, I think, probably two days of render time and get the project rendered on time and submitted for this competition, which was just amazing. It wasn't all plain sailing. There were some problems we had to negotiate. Um, the first one was just logistics. Um, everyone has to be sitting at the computer ready to press the render button on each machine, so that can be a little bit difficult particularly if you've got different time zones. The second problem was errors or changes to the blend file are really tricky to negotiate. Again, you have to have everyone at the computer. So if someone goes away and for a you know, lunch or a sandwich or goes to sleep um, and you want to make a change, you've lost that computer. Uh, we had an issue where we actually had an error that was subtle and it was being rendered in lots of frames and we had to go manually delete those frames, which if you've got you know, a couple of hundred, it's not too bad, but once you start to get into thousands of frames, it becomes really uh, almost defeating the purpose of accelerating the render if you've got to go back and delete so many frames. And it's a, quite a laborious manual task, which isn't pleasant. On the balance though, I think it's a really great method for doing a final render where all of the settings have been finalized and all you just need to do is render the, the final frame. Sorry, the final animation. That's a pretty good transition to talk about you know, what we're doing. So we're working on a network rendering add-on for Blender, which is pretty much going to do exactly the same thing, except it's going to automate most of the manual stuff that we just talked about. So you won't need people at the computers. They'll just need to be switched on. Um, if changes happen, they'll be automatically synced and there are no storage limits. We're now letting people test this in the alpha version, which you can try on a local network first, and then subsequent versions will do peer-to-peer. -peer. So if you're interested in trying out our network rendering add-on, there's a link in the description below. Click on that link, it'll take you to our website, and then you'll be able to register for testing. So that concludes our tutorial for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I want to ask you one last question. Did you find anything valuable or useful in this video? And if the answer to that is yes, then subscribe to our channel. We've got more stuff. Please like this video. Please write a comment below in the comment section and tell us what you thought about it. And finally, share it with someone who you think might find it useful too. And last of all, I'd like to say a really big shout out and give my thanks to the Mantissa 
and also to Andrea Mueller. You guys were awesome in donating your computers and helping us get this whole thing working. Also, I want to say a big thank you to Andrew Buttery for getting us involved in the project. We had lots of fun rendering it and it was really great to see it all come together. There'll be links in the description below to all of their websites and I really suggest that you go to their websites, check them out, subscribe to their channels. Uh, these guys put in a lot of effort making the Blender community a great place and I think they're worthy of your likes and subscribes. So go check out their stuff and we'll be back with more stuff on our add-on and more tutorials about how to get stuff to render real quick. Until then, see you next time.